Bethesda, both the developer and the publisher, has a lot of weight behind that name in 2018. But the Maryland-originated company has a long past filled with some potential projects and outright canceled games that you may not have heard of. So buckle up, because we're here with seven really interesting canceled Bethesda games. Starting off with number seven, did you know that Bethesda was in the process of making a PSP version of the wildly popular Elder Scrolls Oblivion? And it was pretty far along when it got the axe. There's plenty of video floating around out there from this one, and it's pretty impressive considering the tech they were working with at the time. The, the combat definitely looks like it could use a little work, especially in like hit detection and stuff, but visually it's really impressive for a PSP game, and the level of polish here is really surprising. The PSP, you know, being a handheld that kind of paled in comparison power-wise to PS3 and Xbox 360, wasn't able to handle running a huge open world like Oblivion Cyrodiil. Now to make up for that limitation, the game chopped up the world into smaller zones that were accessible from a central hub. Now that hub was still what you'd expect with like various NPCs walking around and going about their business, giving out quests and stuff, and completing some of those quests would alter the appearance of the hub world. For example, like if you rescued someone in the course of a quest, they could pop up walking around the hub later on. And that's a small thing, but it's cool in a game that fit in your pocket in the mid-2000s, but unfortunately, we never actually got to really see it. Next at number six, Bethesda was planning sequels to the 1998 Elder Scrolls action-adventure game, The Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard. Eye of Argonia was a single-player adventure planned as the second in a trilogy of Elder Scrolls adventure games, and then Paradise Sugar was supposed to be the third game following up that. That was teased slightly in the Redguard game intro with a book with a P on it. It was supposed to take place in Elsewhere, but both Paradise Sugar and Eye of Argonia were canceled after poor sales of Redguard. Unfortunately, that's all we really know. But it's really funny to look back and imagine a time when the Elder Scrolls series struggled financially, didn't sell well, and games had to be shelved. Because that definitely doesn't seem to be the case right now. Now next at number 5, we have to talk about Battlecry. Ah, Battlecry. <laughs> While still not officially 100% cancelled at the time of making this video, the writing is pretty much on the wall. This was a game that was intended to be published by Bethesda that was announced in 2014. Battlecry Studios was set up to make this whole free-to-play character-based action game with a unique kind of over-the-top industrial revolution style with unique characters that all had their own different play style. I actually remember playing it at 1E3 and it was a okay game, it just felt like it was lost in a sea of other games of a similar genre. After 2015, they went completely dark and we heard pretty much nothing until Battlecry Studios was suddenly converted to Bethesda Game Studios Austin, who is now co-working on the development of Fallout 76. There was also some hubbub surrounding a developer's LinkedIn profile. It caused a stir because at one point, a guy's profile said that the game was canceled, but then after the controversy erupted, that line was deleted. So that's all we really got for now. We have no official word of the game really shutting its doors. Maybe it'll make a comeback one day? I don't know, it doesn't really seem very likely. It seemed like it was a game very much with the trends of the time. And considering the market is filled with so many other games that do things better, I would expect even if it did come back, it would see a complete reimagining from the ground up. At number four, we have to talk about the Game of Thrones game that never was. Yes, this could have been a thing. While it never really actually became a game or a full project, so to speak, so it wasn't really canceled, Bethesda Studios was in talks with George R.R. Martin and the Game of Thrones camp to make a full open world Game of Thrones RPG at one point. According to an interview with Todd Howard, it was right before Skyrim when the team was approached to make a game, and there was an actual conversation between Game of Thrones and Bethesda, and the team at Bethesda had actually been apparently pretty passionate about A Song of Ice and Fire. But Howard said that ultimately they wanted to create their own world and their own stories, not really someone else's. I'm sure they were thinking, why make Game of Thrones more popular for someone else when they could make Elder Scrolls more popular for themselves? Still, Todd Howard did say the idea was tempting, though, and that some ideas ideas did actually seep into Skyrim. That is something to think about next time you play it on whatever else they poured it over to. You know how it's possible that the Game of Thrones books actually inspired some aspects of Skyrim because Skyrim was worked on before the Game of Thrones show came out on HBO, so there was no real visual guide yet. That sounds like a deep dive for a whole nother video, but we gotta move on. At number three, we have to mention Doom 4. Now, a lot of people call the 2016 Doom game 
Doom 4. I mean, even when you Google search Doom 4, it brings you to Doom 2016. But before that, there was a proper Doom 4 in development. The studio began work on a follow-up to Doom 3 in 2007 and was being developed in tandem with the 2011 title Rage and took inspiration from other modern games of that era, which resulted in kind of a self-aware Call of Duty style linear shooter. The whole thing was talked about in detail in a noclip documentary, Doom Resurrected to Hell and Back. In that documentary, Daniel Dwyer talks to a bunch of people close to the project and Doom director Marty Stratton went on record to say that the game had unbelievable production values. It was really good from that perspective, but it was definitely a twist on Doom that took it to a much more cinematic, much more scripted type of experience. According to him, it was a reimagining of Doom in a way that was new. It was totally new. You were taking cover and popping up and shooting enemies. The demons looked a lot different. It took a while actually to get into fighting demons. You were fighting a lot more zombie type creatures early in the game. Judging from what we have been able to see of this game though, I still am very happy that we got kind of like a return to form or a reimagining of just classic Doom. It is worth saying, if you haven't watched the Noclip doc, you really should. There's a bunch of interviews and footage with Bethesda and id Software, and they offer some really good in-depth insight into all of it. On to number two, we're getting down to my favorites with Prey 2. Oh my god. I don't even know where to start with this one. I was a huge fanboy for this game. It was supposed to be a follow-up to the Prey game from 2006, and Bethesda was supposed to be publishing. Basically, you're like this US martial human who gets transported to an alien world and stranded, and he basically becomes a badass space bounty hunter in a grimy, criminal alien underworld. It looked like a cool combination of like gritty Star Wars crime stuff and a flare of cyberpunk. It was a first-person shooter, but it was highly tactical because it was all about capturing your prey alive, so you were able to run and do cool parkour jumps, do special trick shots, use different types of gadgets to your advantage, and walk around these open city environments filled with market stalls, traders, criminals, back alleys, all kinds of stuff. Just real good sci-fi shit that I really wanted to experience with my own eyes. It was shown off for years and had a convoluted development story until it was pretty much just shelved and we didn't hear anything of it. And then it was later revived as a completely new Prey game developed by Arcane and released in 2017. That game found a fan base, but I will still never be able to let go of how cool Prey 2 looked. So press F to pay your respects. And finally, at number one, here's one you may not have known. In the mid-90s, Bethesda Softworks was working on a, for the time, really ambitious deep space aerial combat game, and it was called 10th Planet. Between 1995 and 98, the game was co-developed between Bethesda and another smaller studio known as Centropolis. Now, judging from the stuff still floating around like promo videos from ZeniMax Media, there was a lot of work done on this game. It looks like it had open space, first person ship traversal and combat, and lots of cutscenes with humans and different alien races, one of which looks a hell of a lot like elites from Halo. A Bethesda developer did go on record saying they spent too much time and money on the cinematic trailers and that they couldn't recreate that look in the game, which is pretty crazy. Usually you don't hear about companies doing that, but the fact that they couldn't actually get the game to the standards that they set and that they decided to cancel it, if that is the real reason, it's kind of an admirable one. Because eventually it was completely canceled. But it does look like Bethesda is finally getting another shot at sci-fi with Starfield, which was formally announced at E3 2018. Now will they take the reptilian creature concepts and stuff like that to the next generation, or will they create something entirely new from the ground up here? Maybe a little bit of both? I don't know. Honestly, I hope it's something new because everything about the 10th planet was 90s as hell. But those are Bethesda's canceled projects that we think are really worth mentioning. I wanna hear from you guys down in the comments though. What do you think about some of these? Do you think they had potential? Are you happy with the 2016 Doom game or would you rather have seen what Doom 4 was originally intended to be? Were you a PSP owner and would you happily jump back into Oblivion again on it? And are you like me? Are you still thinking about Prey 2 all the time and you really miss it? Let's talk about any of this stuff down in the comments. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. But as always, if you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a thing or two, click the like button. That definitely really helps us out and we very much appreciate it. But if you are new, you should consider subscribing because we put out stuff like this every single day too. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.